Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, our monthly visit with legislative leadership to discuss a variety of issues from the state capitol, House and Senate leadership next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Every month during the legislative session, we visit with the leaders of the State House and Senate to talk about the latest bills and issues making the rounds at the Capitol. Joining us tonight and pinch hitting for Senate President Andy Biggs is Senate Majority Leader John McComish. And as always, we welcome Speaker of the House, Andy Tobin. Good to see you both here. Thanks Thank so you much for joining us. Uh, before we move on to pressing matters, let's talk about a little bit in the rearview mirror here. Do a little yeah. postmortem on 1062 because we got you here. We got to talk about this. Your thoughts on the whole thing. What lessons were learned out of this? I think the lessons that were learned, at least that I learned, was that we need to look at bills a little more from what the perception is going to be and not quite so much as what they actually do, but as you know, perception is reality. And I think where we missed the boat on that was looking at it more clinically you know, and legally and exactly what it did and what it didn't do and not look at it, and we didn't look at it the way that the, 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 the public is, was going to look at it. And they saw something that we didn't intend. The idea of the public seeing something yeah. that lawmakers may not have intended, how important is that to what goes on down there? Oh, yeah, it's very important. I think the governor, you know, uh, really wrestled with this. But, you know, this bill was out there a year ago, and, Ted, you and I never had this conversation when I was here a year ago. So, I mean, it, it, uh, perception is also, you know, uh, it could be annualized. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes what's really important today wasn't at all important. A year, a year ago, the governor vetoed this bill, mostly because of uh, other bills mm -hmm. that arrived and, you know, over budget reasons. And, uh, and this time, you know, the, it, it appeared that, you know, the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. The, you know, they were sharing information and language going back and forth and uh, came out of the Senate. I don't think they, they lost a single vote. So it's not, it's not the far right or the far left. I mean, the entire caucus was on board. So it, it, it had all the appearances that everything was kind of being followed. Listen, nobody in that building, nobody at this table is uh, discriminatory. And the last thing I think members want, want to find themselves in is a place where they think that those perceptions create that reality for them. And uh, so that's not the case here. I know, I know a lot of these good and decent people, and some of uh, the Democrats that even come up and go, God, I didn't even know there was going to be an issue on this until it started you know, flying around after it was over. So I think, I think those are lesson learned. Uh, try to uh, uh, especially be careful and, and make sure that... Uh, people's uh, feelings are taken into account. Is this the kind of thing, again, we hear, the, the outcry was, I think, surprising to most. Um, mm -hmm. With that in mind, is this an example of the legislator, legislature out of touch with the public? I, I, I don't think so. Uh, I think it was more uh, 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 an example of what I said earlier, that we were looking at things not exactly as the public would look at it, but clinically, what does it do? What does it don't? What does it not do? Yeah. Uh, uh, that kind of thing. The, you know, if the discrimination is not in your heart, you're not necessarily going to see it in the bill. <laughs> uh, and and but the people from the outside, from the public reading the bill, they they clearly saw it, and that's that's what we missed. Yeah. They saw that, but again, I've heard the word mischaracterization. Mm. I've heard the word perception over reality. Um, did they see reality, or do you think this was all just one big misunderstanding? No, I think they, I, I think it's mostly perception. I think it got it got caught up in that. With the you yes, asked the question, you know, what is, had it, is the legislature out of touch? Yes. I mean, the, this legislature is not out of touch. Obamacare is out of touch. I mean, the polls are clearly uh, identified that. Today, just in the House, just before I came over, we were passing tax credits for veterans. We were passing Victim Rights Act. We were passing a uh, uh, whiff of money for, for uh, wildland fire. We were passing uh, issues on land, DPS, highway dollars. That's not out of touch. And a lot of those bills had, had less venting than, than what this one did. So, no, they're not, they're not out of touch. I think the members are very, very sensitive to their communities. So. If they're that sensitive, how did yeah. this happen? Well, I think the, the same reason that uh, we talked about earlier. You know, folks are, are concerned that uh, a lot of these pressures coming from Washington are eroding some of those rights, and that's why you saw it last year. That's why you saw it the year before. But you didn't have the furor over it uh, now in the last two years. The press wasn't making anything out but, of it. Could, you know, could, could yeah. it be argued? I know it can yeah. be argued from the press's angle. Yeah. Things have changed in the last year well, 
but in the last exactly couple of years, point. in terms of everything from from uh, gay uh, marriage, gay issues yeah. to marijuana, I mean, the yeah. world is different than it was a year I, ago. I, I think yeah. you're right. I yeah. think there's more sensitivity to discrimination issues than there was a year ago, and I think we can attribute mm. it uh, a lot of it to that, and and, and we miss that. Uh, I, I believe we in the legislature missed that, yeah. but that's a that's a lesson learned. Last point on this: um, mm -hmm. there there is talk. Uh, I think three uh, folks in the Senate voted said they voted yes to keep the caucus from fracturing. I want your thoughts on that because I've had some folks who aren't all that politically involved saying, "Are they there to keep the caucus from fracturing or doing the right thing?" Yeah. Well, I, I can't speak for the folks that made that comment, but I. I do know that uh, many of us, myself included, have uh, not hesitated to fracture the caucus when, <laughs> yeah. when, it, was a, uh, yeah. when it was a matter of conscience. Yeah. Uh, uh, and sure, that kind of thing, you think about that kind of thing because that's your team and you try to go along with mm -hmm. them, but uh, you're, you're really there to vote your conscience, and I, I'm repeating myself, but I think we miss the sensitivity uh, of it and how uh, perceptions are changing. And, and indeed, last again, yeah. the question for you, the perception is, after hearing quotes like that, mm -hmm. they're more concerned with their party than they are doing the right thing. Well, I don't think that's, that's the answer here at all. I think when you start uh, transitioning into the little sisters of the poor who were clearly harmed by uh, Obamacare, when you transition into maybe Hobby Lobby, those are, this was about protecting these people's rights. And if, if, if the perception is, is that it went too far, well, let's have a conversation. Let's fix it and, and find a way and bring all those people to the table. But at the end of the day, this was something, you know, there, there's a challenge in Washington. The challenge continues to be that, that votes are being eroded. You know, or I'm, I'm sorry, that, that rights are being eroded, especially in this case, religious rights. So, so these religious freedoms are not something that's, that's new to the debate. But it certainly isn't an issue that's fracturing a caucus over this. I mean, that, that's why I go back to last year. You know, usually dot your I's and cross your T's when things are coming over from, you know, from one building to the other. And you have an entire, the entire caucus is on, which is a mixture of rural versus urban versus the conservatives versus, you know, everybody's on board. So I think this got a, a plenty of vetting. I think uh, we need to sit down and find out how we can make it better without harming people's feelings along the way. Uh, a couple of uh, abortion bills are mm -hmm. making the rounds here. 2284, the surprise inspection of yeah. abortion providers. Why is this law necessary? Well, I think the, the law is clearly necessary. I think I think I was in shock when I found out that, you know, uh, that they can go into a hospital, go into an emergency room. For heaven's sake, say, you know, uh, you can go into to where they do nails and, and you know, uh, as, as well and have an uh, unannounced inspection. But you can't go into an abortion clinic. Well, Which I think uh, th th this wasn't a pro-life bill in my mind. This was about the the health of the of the of the mother. Th that's what this was about. And uh, so I'm I'm surprised that uh, that folks wouldn't want those protections as part of the as part of a facility like that. I think that. the argument would be though that the protections are for privacy, whereas no one really. Well, you cares have no if privacy you if you're done. you have no privacy if you're a veteran and you have cancer going to the veterans hospital. You have you have no privacy if you're a senior and you go in to see your doctor on an Alzheimer's case. I, have, I, and, and I mean the answer is yeah. is that hey you know uh, shouldn't we have the, the 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 opportunity to to inspect just like they do that in meat facility. I was a butcher in New York. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, you know. Yeah. Again, I think the other side would say that there aren't people picketing outside meat inspections or nail salons or <laughs> Alzheimer's clinics, these sorts of things. It, it, they say that it is different. Valid point? Uh, I don't think, I mean, certainly it's different, but any one of these other issues are different, whether it's, a, a, as the speaker said, a veterans clinic or a cancer clinic or something. They're all different, and they're all private. And yes, it's different. I was going to give you the example my barber told me. He's subject to a surprise inspection from the barber board. <laughs> but <clears throat> that's not of the same degree that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. but, but I think there are other issues that are. And um, I just don't understand what's, I mean, what kind of an inspection is it if, if I tell you, uh, <laughs> tomorrow I'm coming to see you, and uh, mm -hmm. you, you better, you know, so you, you're going to yeah. get all ship shape. You know? Well, and again, I, I, the, the critics will say, why, why is this even necessary? We haven't had much, if any, of these kinds of situations. I think there was one, uh, uh, five complaints in three years, only one yeah. 
warrant, where is the problem here? Well, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have this conversation and debate just because you've only had a few. I mean, you, it was just on Friday, I think, that the, some, uh, some judge in, in Massachusetts said it was okay to take pictures under women's skirts, for heaven's sakes. So they all, <laughs> had that been a problem before? I don't think so, but I think there's concerns about some of these issues as they pop up, and I, I don't know if you're going to see some of that find its way to other legislatures as well. I think you're just trying to to look ahead and say, hey, this is a problem. It should be discussed. We should have debate on it. Those, and those against this bill would say yeah. that uh, it, it's, it's an invitation to harass and to intimidate these D, uh, DHS doing this. Do you trust the government entity here at DHS? Do you trust them not to harass and intimidate? Well, they're already in, in, in all our hospitals. <laughs> they're already in all these so, clinics. So, and yes. You do I, well, I, you have to trust certain elements of, of okay. what they do. I, I can't imagine that DHS would like you start intimidating uh, uh, any of these centers and not have the, the press all over them over yeah, that. It, yeah. it, it was something different that was co that was conducting these inspections in DHS than yeah. maybe, you yeah. know, it was a political entity that was allowed to, but yeah. DHS, I mean, that's their, that's part of their job and they're held to a high standard and, yeah. and they perform at a high standard. So I, I don't see the argument about harassment. Okay, and real quickly, there's, there's a court challenge here on restricting drugs and abortions. Why was this law regulating RU486? Why was that necessary? Yeah, well, I think there are those that look at it and see it, it's a, a abortion by another method and that, uh, that abortion is something that needs to be regulated. And so they think that that's, you know, that's what should happen. It should be regulated. It should be regulated, and yet this is apparently, according to those who know more about this than I, this is the latest procedure. This is the yeah. latest medicine, the latest treatment. Why yeah. wouldn't you want the latest medicine? Well, I think the part. Treatment? I think part of the, the the conversation is is they're nervous that some some gentleman can go in there and get that drug for an underage person as well. So I think that's a very clear clear part about well who who can have this medication and how is it distributed and so you might start thinking to yourself oh my gosh who you know who is this woman he's taking this back is she underage is she you know so I, I think those are uh, those are good debates that and, and mm. indeed it sounds as though that the, the the case here is that this is a burden on patients and their yeah. right to choose an abortion is mm -hmm. it not a burden. I think it's a, uh, is it not a burden? Regulating for the RU486. Well, I think if you think that, uh, that, that that's inappropriate for a, a male to go in and get a, a drug for maybe an underage female, we, I don't know. I, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, wait a second. This is uh, uh, some of these uh, pharmaceutical com uh, uh, pharmacies don't want to be using that as well, and they're being forced into use it, which goes back to some of the l religious arguments. So, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but I think it was a, I think it was a good debate. It was a good I think bill. anyone who, who's even pro-choice would say that it is a major, major step that someone is going to make to mm -hmm. decide to have an abortion. And if there's some laws that kind of slow that down, I mean, what's your definition mm -hmm. of burden? Uh, my my definition is mm -hmm. that uh, if it if it slows down, it makes it think a little bit, it makes mm -hmm. it more you have to be more deliberate. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. and, kind of tying in a couple of, of issues here. Center for Arizona Policy, behind these bills, behind mm -hmm. 1062, mm -hmm. behind a lot of things that seem to go on at the Capitol, there is a perception that they are too influential and that you can't say no to Kathy Herod and her group. <laughs> is that perception valid? Uh, no. I mean, you can say no to Kathy Herod and her group. And, and um, I can remember a bill a couple of years ago that we that, uh, in, in the Senate that the Republican caucus said no to Kathy and it was it was changed you know the bill was changed so th there is pushback uh, uh, one of the reasons that and maybe the key reason why Kathy is viewed and her group is viewed to have power mm -hmm. is that most of the people in the Republican caucus if not all agree with what her principles are that she's that she advocates for so it's not her having the power as much as yeah. what we're doing uh, in most instances lines uh, line what she wants us to do lines up with where the where the members are in the first place I guess that's so, the best so, way so she had Democrat votes on this too I mean is that just Republicans right. so, I mean, sure but a, I, I think yeah. that folks would say that mo it's mostly yeah. Republicans sure, sure. and social Probably conservatives sure. and there's the idea the perception again is mm -hmm. that you say no to the, to yeah. the CAP you say no to Kathy well, Sure, I, you'll, I face, you'll face a primary opponent hey, I say no I say no to the governor I face primary opponents <laughs> you know okay. so I mean it's a, yeah this is a it, uh, this is just a uh, uh, I, I think the press just likes throwing that up, quite frankly. You know, uh, our members read the bills and, the, you know, they're a pro-life caucus anyway. Uh, I think Ar Arizona's a pro-life state. So, uh, we, you know, Kathy Herod is not the one that's out there drafting everything. Hey, have you thought about this one lately? 
It, it just doesn't happen that way. But okay. if she sees something coming along, she's going to jump on board because that's what they do. Last question on this. If that yeah. is the perception, and it is the perception, yeah. whether the sure. press wants to yeah. jump on it or not, that yeah. is the perception. How do you change it? Um, well, I don't know. I don't know how you change that perception because mm -hmm. it, it, is the, it is the perception, and, and I, think it's, uh, I think it's a little unfair. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know how you change the perception in people's minds. Some, mm -hmm. uh, there's a little bit of a mythology, I think, that is developed about yeah, her power. Yeah, let's, and, yeah. You know, and, and, yeah, and that's right. those things happen. And I don't know how you reverse how, that. How much of Arizona really knows C the Central Arizona Partnership in Kathy Hurd's name? They're getting to know it. Well, yeah, but why? <laughs> because because you, instead of talking to lawmakers like at least you do, Ted, you know, they're out there, you know, going over and talking to Kathy on this. You know, these lawmakers didn't sit there and, you know, the, this group does not make contributions to, to campaigns. They are a pro-life group. They believe in school choice. That's what they are. You know, I would expect that they be in favor. So I, I would expect they would come down and have these conversations. They're good people. You know, if the perception is that, that you know, that they're running the legislature, I, I don't see them around there at budget time. I don't see them around there when we're talking highways. I don't see, you know, it's just, it's just absurd. For that piece that they ap absolutely participate in, I think it's appropriate for them. Just like the NRA will be down there on a, on a gun bill or the AEA will be down there in education, but you never ask, well, what's the perception? Don't the AEA run the Democrats out? Well, I mean, you just don't have those same well, conversations. Well, yeah, if, you know? if the Democrats ever get back into power, I can't wait to answer well, that. Well, you know, but the answer is they can get them to go no or yes. Yeah. So, well, I mean, and, and yeah. so again, it's, it's know, certain, I think the influence of certain groups down there it, it is yeah. something that needs to be discussed, especially from those of us on the outside. We yeah. don't have that influence. We can't go wandering the halls. We can't go going you into offices. You have a lot of influence, oh, Dad. You got plenty of there. influence. We'll you see know. what you think after yeah. this one. Uh, lifetime cap on Medicaid. Why is this necessary? Well, what you have is you have uh, national health care is run amok. Uh, the Democrats are running away from them as fast as they can. Years, years ago, when things were in crisis mode, we, have, we would apply to HHS, Health and Human Services, to say, hey, we need some help. We need some relief. And from time to time, they gave it to us. You know what they gave it to us on, Ted? The, the uh, childless adults. Large population. Mm -hmm. Everyone said, oh, Kathleen Sebelius would never do that. The, you'll never get that. So all this bill does is it says, now, wait a second. We all know that this is crushing that's going to come down on the states. It's crushing. The debt's going out of control and the crisis is getting bigger. All this bill said was annually, annually, let's have a conversation about things that can keep our costs under control, which is lifetime caps, emergency rooms, things like that. All it is is, is a request that would go from the access director to Secretary Sebelius or whoever the HHS secretary is, give us some tools in the toolbox so we can afford to do what we've done well here in Arizona, which manage access. I think critics will say, you already know the answer to this. They're gonna say no to these particular but, but, rules. I, and I just gave you the answer. I said that those are the same critics, Ted, that you keep talking to, who said we would never get them to give us a, a change on the uh, childless adults, and they did. But you they know did. why? Because yes. we were going bankrupt if they didn't, and that's what this is for. If 90% is paid by the feds as far as its expansion population, is it really crushing the states as you see it? Uh, not at present. There's a concern that, that it won't remain, and in, in fact, mm -hmm. it won't remain 90%. Uh, that, that, uh, and there's a concern that it, that it goes down and it will, add to the, it will add to the state's burden. And we're putting more people on. Mm -hmm. uh, so even if it stays at 10%, there's more people at the 10%. Uh, mm -hmm. So sure, it, it's, it, it's, it's money. And, 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 I'm and it's federal about money, it. too. Yeah. You know, I mean, but, well, indeed, we, we pay federal taxes as well as yes, state taxes. We do, yeah. but I mean, I, the, the idea that the yeah. state is hit when it's 90%, and if it goes below 80, we're, we're out of it anyway. Well, I'm fascinated by this conversation because you know, the, the president, with his pen, and his phone has already changed the law half a dozen times. Everyone's like, well, they're never going to give you permission to do that. I go, give me permission. They've already written with the stroke of a pen on half a dozen issues going out on Obamacare. You know, so in my view, listen, these are protections that Arizona should have in the toolbox when I'm convinced it's going to blow up. And for those that don't think it's going to blow up, maybe we got a few more years than Tobin's given them. But I'm going to tell you, these are good things to be, it's asking permission. Say, can we do this if we need it? Aren't, so, it does, doesn't the law say that we've got to review this in 2016 anyway? It, it, well, yes, it, and thank you <laughs> for that. We do have to continue to review it. But that doesn't change the fact that Access should be annually asking for things that they might need to make sure that this is affordable to the state of Arizona. But things like uh, fi caps on employment, to have to look for a job, have to look for job yeah. training, five years uh, unless you're a single parent and those sorts of mm -hmm. things. 
Those are not kind of things. I, I know you say that they've granted waivers yeah. in the past. They're yeah. not the kind of things that they grant waivers for, though. Not well, not I don't know if they are. With ones in emergency room, emergency room copays. Those are widely. Remember, I'm I'm in the insurance business. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand how you, how you try to get some costs under control. When this thing blows up, we have got to have some of these tools in the toolbox. Say, we have got to stop the pressures on our emergency room hospitals. We have got to stop those who are just not going to go out and buy a policy and just going to sit there and not work. They're, they're just simple tools. I mean, and I know it sounds good. It's good fodder, but the answer is is that this uh, national health care is in such a, a hard way right. Right now, even the president is trying to find a way out of it. Yeah. Only got a couple of minutes left. Sure. I want to talk about uh, vouchers, for lack of a better word, <laughs> uh, regarding uh, public money. And, and again, those critics, yeah. they're all saying this public money is going to private schools, and now there's an attempt to maybe up to 70 some odd percent of Arizona kids to enroll in what was a, a initially just for disabled children. What do you make of all this? Well, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think that's the question, is how far does the state of Arizona want to go? And I don't know that answer, mm -hmm. uh, but I think, I know in the Senate we're talking about that, you know, just how far. Uh, my perception is that some of the vouchers, for lack of a better term, for some of the dis disabled kids is a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't hear much pushback on that, and it seems to be working to a certain degree. But the question is, and I don't know the answer, is, is the one that you're asking, is this a step too far in that direction? And, mm -hmm. and I don't know, it may be. 30 seconds, step too yeah. far? No, it's not a step too far if this is related to children in DNF schools who are poor. It's not a step too far. If these kids are stuck in a DNF school because they are poor and can't afford another option, it is not too far. It's, a, it's obligatory for us to consider those children. It's not about everybody. It's about those children who should, if they are in DNF schools, have an option. Will there be enough accountability if they're all wind up in private schools? Well, you're in a DNF school, Ted. I mean, I'm guessing there's a well, there's some and we know you're in a DNF school, well, but you the have parent, the same accountability. Remember in the what school. remember what accountability is supposed to be. The parents are supposed to get be the first ones on accountability. All right, we'll have to stop it right yeah. there. Gentlemen, good discussion. Good hey, to thanks, have you Ted. here. Thanks. Thank you. Good to be here. And that is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.